select new R Studio project. Let me make it slightly bigger. So you can customize your screen by going to tools and then global options. So under appearance, for example, I'm going to increase font size so that you can see very clearly. So let me try 16. So that makes it slightly more bigger. So the advantage of using RStudio Cloud is you don't have to really download anything and install anything. You just get started. Click on these uh, double squares in the first window. You see this, just click there so that you get four windows. So it was like this, you just click here. When we write a code that we want to run, that we do in this area, first window, where it says untitled, we are going to name it later on, but all the codes are written here. So for example, if you want to write a code five plus five, and you want to run that, there are multiple ways you can run that. You can select this line, whatever you have written, and then hit run, this button here, run. And the output will appear in console. It says that five plus five is 10. So you can run this code like this, or you can be anywhere in this line. You don't have to select the whole thing. You may be at the beginning or at the end, or your cursor may be somewhere in the middle. And if you still hit run, it will do the same thing. So you don't have to select everything. If our next code is six times three. So if I am in the first line, I run that, automatically cursor goes to the next line. I don't have to move my cursor manually and I can click run. It will run the second line and tell me that the answer is 18. Now, another way you can run, you can be in the first line and then select control plus enter. So without using mouse, if you simply do control plus enter, control plus enter, that also runs the codes. If you are working on something, you are running codes, then looking at some plots and doing some analysis. Very soon, your console may have a lot of output and sometimes you just want to clean up everything. So you have a lot of output here. So if you go to console and hit this uh, broom at the corner, it will clear your console, it will clean it up. Or you can do control plus L. Control starts with C and L, so clean, that will, empty your console. So I'm going to clean this up. And in R, we can use a hash symbol, this symbol here to write comments. And R understands that it's not a code, it's just a comment. So you can put some notes or titles using hash symbol. Let's say we talk about data. In R, I can store data by creating, let's say something like X, where I want to store a number. So the way I will write that code is, I will type X and then a point arrow towards X using this symbol less than and minus sign. So put together, it looks like an arrow pointing towards X. And suppose I want to store a number eight in X. So this is how I'm going to write that code. And when I run this, you will see in the third window, it says that this variable x takes a value of eight. I can create another one, let's say y, and store some other number like, let's say 23. Run this. Now it stores this information that y has a value of 23. And then if I type x plus y and try to run this, it will say the total is 31. So it will just add the two numbers which is stored in X and Y. We can also store more numbers in X and Y. So for example, suppose I create X again, but this time I want to store more numbers. So this is how actually I'm going to do that. C within parenthesis, some numbers like four, six, nine. So when you are storing more numbers, you have to use this small case C and within parenthesis, all the numbers that you want. So as soon as you do that, you see in the third window, now it recognizes X is a numeric variable. It has three values, four, six, and nine. Similarly, Y could be maybe one, two, three. 
And then if I do x plus y, it will tell me that this is 5. So 4 plus 1 is 5. 6 plus 2 is 8. 9 plus 3 is 12. For example, if you want numbers like from 10 to 20, you can simply write 10 colon 20 and run. And it means 10 to 20. If you do in reverse order like 20 to 10 and hit run, those numbers are in reverse order. One important thing about R is it is case sensitive. So I use lowercase, lowercase. If I don't use lowercase here, if I by mistake put uppercase, try to run, it will not recognize that object X because it doesn't know what uppercase X is. So always make sure that you are using the correct case. And for those of you who are doing R for the first time, most difficult things in the beginning is forgetting about R being case sensitive. If a variable, for example, has uppercase and you are using lowercase, it will keep on giving you error. Another way you can get pattern data is sequences. And there's a function called SEQ. One good thing about this interface is that when you type a function, it recognizes that, okay, there's a function like this and what exactly it does. So some description is available as soon as you start typing. Either you complete typing or simply select because sometimes uh, if the function name is very long and you type first few and suddenly it pops up, it's better to just select because you avoid getting any spelling errors. So if you do sequence, the way we use this is uh, we can say we want a sequence from, and then we have say from where. So let's say we want a sequence from maybe 12, with the comma two, and then again, equal sign. Suppose we want up to 21. And then we can also specify if you want a specific increment. So you can say increase every time by maybe three. And when you run this, it starts with 12. And then 12 plus 3, 15 is the second number. 15 plus 3, 18. 18 plus 3, 21. And it will end with that number. There are some times you want to repeat some numbers. So the function to re use repeat is REP. So REP replicates the values in X. So if I select this, and suppose I give three different numbers using C, open close parenthesis. And let's say my numbers are five, two, and one. And this I want to repeat four times. So if you run this, you'll notice that five, two, one, five, two, one, five, two, one, and five, two, one gets repeated four times. So it's not necessary. I have to use all the time numbers. I can also use text. So for example, I may say, let's start with C this time, where which means we want to put more than one value. So within C, we can say re repeat. So let's say we have some data on male, females, and we want like to use F, some number like three, and repeat M, maybe our data has only a sample of size two for male. So F is repeated three times and M is repeated two times. So there are different ways you can generate pattern data. What we generated here earlier also like X and Y, they are basically called data vectors. So for example, we can say X contains values from one to 10 and Y we assign values from maybe 21 to 30. So we run this, run this, and if you are interested in x plus y, which can also be like stored in some other variable like z very easily. So let me generate a vector with name, grade. So these are student grades. Somebody got 100, somebody got 95, somebody only 80, and someone maybe 95 and maybe 90. And then in name, we can store their names, so probably Don, maybe Brian, okay. one, two, three, maybe one more. So we can store names like this. So every time you are using uh, some text, we put them in quotation. It could be single code, it could be double code. It doesn't matter. When you are uh, working on something, very soon you generate some codes, you can go to file just like you save a Word file, Excel file, or any file. You can go to file 
and click save as and name your uh, file like i'm going to call this week one and hit save so what it does is you see earlier it was untitled now it is week one and for r related uh, files default extension is r so you can see it's dot r and you will also notice that now it is appearing in the fourth window under files you see week one dot r so this is the file we just now save is going to be available here i generated these uh, two vectors grade and name and what i can do is i can save them in a data frame let's call that data frame my data and point an arrow towards it and the way we convert uh, those two vectors into data frame is by using a function called data dot frame so as soon as you say data dot one of the options that you'll see is data dot frame so that function if you click there and then say i want to have a vector grade and name in it you run that so now you have a basically a data frame called my data with five observations and two variables if you click on my data so i'm in the third window and if i click on my data it will automatically run a code called uh, view my data and this data set will be available here so data frame is basically rows and columns the way you have data in excel file or a csv file in nice rows and columns uh, basically in a very structured format data frame is exactly that so i'm going to cross this out this window that appeared just now i'm going to cross it it will not delete anything it will only remove that view but my data is available so it's not that we are going to lose that especially when we are dealing with like lots of data you can run str function for structure so if you select that and type my data and run so in a way it gives you a metadata like data about data so it says that my data is basically a data frame with the five rows and two columns so that's like typical our variables are usually in columns and observations are in rows and another thing it automatically does is which may be accurate many times it may not be accurate sometimes so grade it says it's a numeric variable and that's understandable because these are numbers so it's a numeric variable and name it says is a character variable because it says text that's what a structure function will do it will give you a quick overview of your data this data is too small and we can see everything at once but when you have 1500 variables when you have like uh, lots of data so sometimes you have to get an idea about the data using these functions if you type data and open in close parenthesis and run you will get a big list of various uh, data sets that are available within r you have air passenger data between 49 and 60 bj sales carbon dioxide chicken weight titanic so a lot of data sets are already inbuilt into r there is a cars data set a speed and stopping distance of cars like once you apply brake at certain speed after how many meters it stops one of the data sets is iris so if you want to access any data set i'm going to close this and type data sorry let me switch back to our four windows so data and within quotes iris when we ran data i could see that iris was all lower case so i'm going to use lower case and run so when you run that that means your iris data set is not now available it is available to be used we can use many functions to explore this data one function we already know is str for structure and then we can say iris when we run this it will give this output that says it is a data frame like rows and columns and there are 150 observations and five variables or five columns first four variables are actually numeric obviously it cannot list all 150 observations it has listed just first few and the last uh, variable is species and 
it is indicating that it's a factor variable with three levels, which means uh, there are three type of flowers in this data set. First two are indicated and there's one more. If you want to look at first few rows of uh, this data, for that you can use head and iris. So it gives you first six rows by default, all the values and what species it is. Tail and iris will give you last six. Sometimes if you, for whatever reason, you want to look at uh, some specific rows and columns. So you can combine that actually with the, uh, let's say head, iris, and instead of first six rows, I want only first three. So it can give me first three. Or you can go like this also, you can straight away say, I want iris and then use square brackets to specify rows and columns. If I say I want first four rows, I can say one colon four and then specify columns. If you don't say anything, it will print all the columns, but let's say you want only columns four and five. So you can say four colon five. So it will only pull that data out of the total data and give you first four rows and fourth and fifth columns. Another useful function is summary. So if you select summary and type iris and run, it will give output that summarizes all the variables. This summary is one, two, three, four, five, six number summary. You have minimum, you have maximum, and then you have the quartiles, first quartile and third quartile. You also have median and mean. So first quartile is the number that divides the data into two where 25% of the data is below first quartile and remaining 75% is above first quartile. And median divides the data into two such that 50% is above, 50% is below. And third quartile, 75% below and 25% above. Mean is the center of gravity of your data. So you add everything, divide by the sample size, you get mean. For numeric variables, like first four variables, it gives you this summary, but look at what it does with variable, which is not numeric, which is a factor variable. You have categories like first type of flower, second type of flower, third type of flower. So there it just gives you count. So how many data points with first type of flower, how many data points with second type, how many with third type. This data set actually is balanced 50-50-50. So that's what you are going to get out of summary. So one of the metrics we use is SD, standard deviation. And to use that standard deviation, you have to first say, what is your data? My data is iris. And then you have to use a dollar sign. As soon as you use dollar sign, all the variables are going to pop up. You can select. So if you want standard deviation for the first variable, you just click on sepal.length run, you get standard deviation. 